Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online guide where today we're going to be taking a look at modders. Now for those of you who are looking around for a guide on how to acquire mods and get unlimited cash in GTA Online, well, sorry to disappoint but this video isn't going to be about that. What we're going to be taking a look at is existing modders within the GTA Online community, what they can do, what abilities do they have, as well as share some insight regarding myths and beliefs about what modders can and cannot do. So let's begin. So first of all, to be able to do a video like this, I have to first acquire a modder. Now, as a GTA YouTuber, I've met my fair share of modders. But at times, you'll get those special kind of modders that'll be like, Oh man, it's Pyron Gaming! Oh man, I love your work, dude! Uh, just, just let me know if you need me to spawn in some cars or give you some cash. I'll do anything for you. And as a result, whether I like it or not, I usually have like one or two modders following me around as I go about my day in GTA Online, helping me out and protecting me from tryhards, griefers and rival modders. Then one day I asked a modder, hey, would you mind sharing some information as to what special powers your mods give you? And he was just like, yeah, sure man, here you go. So now, thanks to a modder, whose name I shall keep secret just to protect them from being shamed, I can now show you just what modders are capable of. And before we get into this, let me remind you that yes, while there are some of the generic modders that go around ruining everyone's day, there are also some modders out there, like the ones that follow me around, just want to make the game more fun without ruining the gameplay experience of those who don't necessarily want to mix with modders. And it's those kinds of people that I can respect. Can you? Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So, first of all, let's talk about what modders can do, which gives them their notoriety of being an evil villain within the GTA community. What makes them so dangerous to normal players within a free mode session? Well, let's start with the basics. If they so choose to do so, they can make themselves invulnerable, invisible to radar, invisible to the naked eye, fly at will, super jump, run really fast, pretty much all the basic superpowers that you can think of, they can do it. If they want to have someone killed, they can just blow them up, send goons to come after them, use the physics engine to kill them, force a suicide, and loads more. Going passive mode will make you less susceptible to being targeted, but there's just so many ways a Modder can have you killed if they so choose to do so, there's just no point trying to resist. Modders can mess you up without having to kill you, they can entrap you in a cage, forcing you to have to kill yourself to escape, they can force your character into an animation which stops the player from moving, and even worse, they can attach objects to you. Literally, any entity in the game can be attached to a player, and if the affected player attempts to drive a vehicle, there's a high chance that the physics engine will just be like... <laughs> Modders can also lag your game up really, really bad. The modder that was doing it to me was just doing it for a short time so that they don't crash my game. They can also teleport players wherever they want, for good and for bad. And they can also do some rather worrying stuff. Basically, they force me into my own apartment and force me to sell it. At least that's what I was led to believe. Though ultimately this was nothing more than a prank and upon checking my apartment from my mechanic, all was well. Thankfully. There was a time like back a year ago where modders had the ability to instantly drain a player of all their cash. Well thankfully nowadays this has been patched and is impossible to happen, but the modder that I was with showed me a pretty funny way that they can prank players into thinking that their money is being forcefully drained away. Again, this is nothing more than a little prank and is just a fake message that's displayed on the target's screen. Still pretty funny though. What isn't funny though is the fact that modders have the ability to find out your internet protocol number, or IP. For those not in the know, an IP is something that everyone has when they play online, and everyone's IP is always unique. IPs are trackable to a pretty accurate location of where that player is in the real world, which means that if the modder really wanted to, they could find you in real life. Modders are in no way able to forcefully remove the money of any player in GTA Online, nor can they ban people like they say they can. Or at least they can't now. Uh, I'm not sure if they could back then, but they certainly can't now, that's for sure. 
What they can do, at least, is if they decide that your existence is annoying, they can either force kick you from the session, or even worse, they can force crash your game, sending you back to desktop. So what happens if we pit a modder against another modder? Can anything happen? Do we get some kind of epic battle like the ones you see in those superhero movies? Well, for one, modders, at least the one I'm with here, has the ability to detect other modders. Modders can also prevent themselves from being force kicked from other modders, and they can also prevent themselves from being vote kicked from ordinary players. Now let's talk about how modders can actually help players, if they want to be that kind of modder who is nice to people and uses their powers for good. Well, they can drop health, armor, weapons, and other stuff for players to pick up. They can give players every weapon in the game that shouldn't be obtainable, like the railgun and the snowball, though this is only temporary. If a player is to switch session or go offline and then back into the game, they will lose those weapons. By now, most people will know this, but modders can also drop money. But the amount of cash that you can acquire from a modder is so low, it's not even worth the effort of picking up the money. A common misconception about picking up dropped money is that you'll get banned if you do so. At worst, you may get some cash deducted from your account, as I've seen in the past, but I've never witnessed a case where someone got banned for picking up modded money. Some people are false fed money whether they like it or not, and even Rockstar Games know it's unfair to just ban people just because they were a target by a modder. Though if you're someone like the professional who likes to earn money the legitimate way, you can always just open up a support request and tell them that you've been force fed money, and they'll be able to help you out. If a modder so choose to give me an unfair advantage in a PvP battle, they can make me semi-god mode in the form of a force field around my character's body. I'm able to take limitless amounts of gunfire, but literally anything else in the game would be able to kill me easily, like being run over or blown up by a rocket. You can see how it works upon death, it's remarkable simple actually, they just put an invisible ball around me, and its collision mesh prevents any bullet from getting through. But because Rocket's blast radius can hit through walls, the force field doesn't do anything to protect me. Moving on, let's talk about things modders can do to the world. Well, surprisingly, recently modders were able to get full control over the world's current time, the weather, and if there is snow on the ground or not. This isn't just client side though, everyone sees the changes that a modder can do. Apparently this is a new thing for modders to be able to do, so I was told. This actually came in very handy during the recording of the If Tryhard Ruled Free Mode video. Waiting for the rare chance of it raining whilst it was nighttime would have taken forever, but thanks to modders it was very easy. Not to mention we wouldn't have had long to record everything before the sun comes back up, forcing us to have to wait until it's set again. So in this regard, modders can actually become very useful when it comes to recording scenes for videos which I can't do in single player. Most of you will probably know this, but modders can also spawn vehicles, both ones in GTA Online as well as vehicles that cannot be legitimately obtained. Modders can also spawn in regular objects like fences and lampposts, and with a bit of creativity we can also play games that were not meant to be played in GTA like Call Football! Besides that, modders can do a variety of things that I either neglected to mention or forgot, so here's just a few more things that modders can do.
And with that, I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. I've said it once and I'll say it again. There's modders out there which fit the stereotype. They ruin people's legit play sessions of the game. And then there's also modders out there that just want to use the lack of an anti-cheat system in GTA Online to enhance the play session of those that choose to accept their offering. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for loads more content coming to you very soon. See you around, folks.